Hey there guys, how you doing? Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. I have been waiting. Y'all don't even know how bad I've been waiting for tonight's live. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited about tonight's live. So as you come in, say hi to me and then I will say hi to you. Okay, hopefully you can see me. I'm seeing uh, no comments. Definitely say comments because normally this thing uh, allows me to like, Oh, good. It's working. Okay. You've been waiting all day. Good, good, good. Hey, Nadine. Great to see you guys. So in case I'm new to you, let me quickly um, introduce myself to you. And then I'm going to get right to the subject matter of the moment. All right. So my name is Dr. Avis. I am a uh, award-winning author. Uh, and it's kind of very relevant. I just normally just say that. But the, what my book is about is very relevant to what's going on now. Okay. So the name of my book is How Exceptional Black Women Lead. And that's not a shameless plug, although it could be. Uh, but the reason why I mention it is because a lot of this crap that you guys are seeing right now is happening specifically because Kamala Harris is a black woman. And yes, I said it. She's a black woman. And that's number one on the list of the ridiculous lies that I am going to debunk tonight with these idiots running around here saying that she's not black. But I'm not getting to the lies part yet, the debunking part yet, okay? So here we go. So thank you, thank you, Shelley. So award-winning author of the book, How Exceptional Black Women Lead. I'm also a media commentator. Um, my background is in politics, obviously. Um, so I'm a political commentator specifically. I've been doing a lot of political commentating <laughs> Over the past 24 hours, every medium you can imagine, television, radio, I've done everything probably but podcast, okay? So I've done every medium you can imagine in the past 24 hours, multiple times for multiple people in the United States and in Canada. Um, I, they tried to book me with Al Jazeera, but I just didn't have time, okay? So I've been, uh, there have been people all around the world that have been talking about this, interested in this, wanting perspectives on this. And I've been giving that for the past 24 hours. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do this live is because I'm at the end of my road with foolishness. Okay. But let me, let me, let me just say one last thing. I'm also, um, I am also a media monetization mentor. So I teach people how to attract media attention uh, in a strategic way in order to leverage more leads and more bank for their bottom lines in terms of their businesses and their brands that they look to monetize their expertise. So that is my full thing. I'm the creator of the Perfect Media Pitch Masterclass. You can go to perfectmediapitch.com and get deets, get the deets, get the details on the next Perfect Media Pitch Masterclass, which will be happening um in the not too distant future, okay? So now let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get down to brass tacks right now. I'm seeing you guys coming into the house. Hey, everybody. Hey, Brian. I'm so glad that you came, Brian, because Brian is actually the inspiration for this live. <laughs> Did you know that, man? You're the inspiration for this because Brian was like, you know what? You should really just do a live and tell people about, you know, all the misconceptions. I was like, yeah, I probably should <laughs> because it's a lot of piecemeal stuff that I've done over the months, but I've not like done like one live where I focused on this and uh, I wanted to focus on this and here's the deal. Um, so Kamala Harris has just made history again and I say again because this is not her first time making history, okay? She was the first black person and the first woman uh, to be elected as the attorney general of California. And she did that twice. She's only the second black woman in the history of the U.S. Senate to sit in the Senate. And there have been, let me get the number right. There have been 1,984 people who have been elected to the U.S. Senate since 1789. Oh, out of all of those 1,984 people, there have only been two black women and Kamala Harris is one of them. So 
So this is just the latest time that she's made history. She has won every political campaign she's ever been involved in in her life. Until she suspended her presidential campaign, which every presidential candidate has done in the last elect primary, except for Joe Biden. And guess what? She got the nod for VP. So in my book, that means she finished in second place. So let me just start there. That's just setting the table for what we're going to talk about for the next several minutes. Because I'm annoyed. I'm going to tell you why I'm annoyed. Because black women always have to put up with this crap. And what makes me more annoyed than anything is when we get it from our own freaking people. We expect to have to deal with BS when we're out in the world fighting everything that we fight every day. Fighting racism, fighting sexism. Every black woman on here today, all of you, tell me in the, in the chat if you've had to put up with bullshit because you're a black woman. Haven't you had to put up with that? Put up with ridiculousness based on racism and based on sexism every freaking day of your life. You've had to put up with that. And now you have this extraordinary woman who has made history over and over and over again. And some of you Negroes are never satisfied and I'm tired of it. So now that I've vented Let me talk about what I want to talk about today. <laughs> I had to vent. <laughs> I had to vent. Because I'm tired with a D and a P and a T on the end. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of the ridiculousness. Listen, I want you guys to share this. I want you guys to tag people in this who already talk, always talking out of the side of their neck and don't know what the hell they talking about. Please distribute this widely because I am tired. And let me also say, personal preference is fine, Chalet, but a lot of people are lying about her record, which is why I am on here today. If you have disagreements and we are operating in the realm of truth, this does not apply to you. But if you are spreading lies because you are too lazy to go and do the research yourself, you're part of the damn problem. Period. All right. Okay. That's a good idea, Clarine. I should put this on YouTube. All right, so here we go. First, I want to say that I am not the encyclopedia on um, Kamala Harris's record, but my good girlfriend is. So if you really want to get every damn detail possible, I suggest you follow Black Women Views on Twitter and she has a page here on Facebook, Black Women's Views. She has written extensively about Kamala's record, has been doing it since the actual primary. She knows it inside, outside, sideways, upside down. She really is the encyclopedia, okay? I'm just going to give you a little portion tonight to address some of the most egregious lies that I hear. And I'm tired of them. And if any of you saw my interview today with NPR, you saw a prime example of that. Did any of you guys see the NPR interview that I did today? If you saw that, <laughs> if you saw that, 
you know exactly, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The lies, people. The lies, you got to check them. And you got to check them in real time. I am not going down with the foolishness. And I'm tired of people who have lost, lost. I mean, this is like you don't get an award for participation. When you've lost and you lost twice, that means you lost. And you don't get to tell anybody else what to do because you lost. And if you would have won, then your shit would have been, that would be the, the standard bearer. That's what we would be doing right about now. But, and it was put up to a vote. And guess what? You lost twice. So don't even try me with the ridiculousness. But that's a whole nother, kind of nother. Thank you, Patience. <laughs> she, said the, she said the NPR interview was a master class in checking lies in real time. Girl, you got to. You cannot let them get away with it. And I'm so glad it was live. You know they wanted to pre-tape the interview. They wanted to pre-tape that interview with me today. Mm -mm, I was busy. I ain't have time. We do it live or we're not doing it. And I'm so glad we did it live because you know they would have cut that ish out if it was pre-taped. And I wanted her to get chin checked live. I wanted that to happen so that next time they think twice before they do that foolishness. I think sometimes people are too nice to people and you let people keep on getting away with stuff and getting away with stuff. Cause you're like, oh, come on, let's come together. No, that's a lie. All right, so first lie I wanna talk about. The first lie, uh, the, it is, uh, Denitria, Denitra, it is on my, um, how do you really feel about it, Karen? <laughs> Karen asked me, how do I really feel about it? Girl. I mean, it's, I'll just, it's on my uh, Facebook page. So it's not far down. It's probably the, because I haven't posted much since then. So I, it's the one that says NPR interview, hashtag uh, Kamala Harris VP. I think that's the hashtag I used for it. But um, yeah. Check that out. Lies. Okay, the first lie I want to address tonight, because this is the one that really annoys me, probably more than others, because this is just freaking, it's laziness and it's ignorance if you, if you go for this. I mean, this type of thing, I'm like, do you know anything about your history if you start with this foolishness with me? I should have really found this page in my book beforehand because there are some statistics I wanted to give you behind this. But let me just say, here is the deal. So the first lie that I want to knock down is, uh, Nadine said it was so gratifying. <laughs> Somebody had to do it, girl. <laughs> and y'all know she cut that interview short. You know it's supposed to be longer than that. But once she found out that shit wasn't going the way she anticipated, she bailed. Um, so here's here's the here's the deal. Absolutely, Chalet. She we agree. She is a black woman. A, I have been but I have been hearing a lot of people saying that she's not black. A lot of black people and white people. Like I've been hearing, it's on Fox. You have some of these crazy fools on. Uh, this is one of the first things that the whole right wing started saying right after she got picked. And you're also hearing a lot of far, far, like far off the deep end black people saying it too. She's not black. I will acknowledge there is a difference in terms of how I acknowledge or recognize different groups of people. Blackness to me refers to the, di the diaspora. The, and when I say diaspora, I'm not talking about black people who don't live in America. I'm talking about black people who don't live in Africa. That's really what the diaspora is, you guys. 
the diaspora is black people who no longer or who do not live in the motherland. That means that you are part of the diaspora. That means that I am part of the diaspora. That means that black people in Jamaica are part of the diaspora. That means that black people all over the Caribbean are part of the diaspora. That means that black people in Europe are part of the diaspora. That means black people in South America are part of the diaspora. That means that black people in Mexico are part of the diaspora. That means that black people all throughout Central America are part of the diaspora. That means that black people even in the Pacific are part of the diaspora. I have not been anywhere in the world. I will say that I've not been to every country in the world, but I've been to a lot of them. Y'all. And there's not one country that I've been through to in the diaspora outside of the motherland that does not have black people. Now, there are some countries in the diaspora that have large concentrations of black people. <laughs> yes, Lewis. Uh, those places are typically places that were touched by the triangle slave trade. And I know I will give you this excuse that maybe you just didn't get this in history class when you were in fourth grade. Because I know that we do a piss poor job of teaching about black history in the American school system. So this would have probably required you to do some extra curricular reading. But in case you didn't know, the triangle slave trade was called the triangle slave trade for a reason. It's because the ships went in a triangular pattern between West Africa to South America, to the Caribbean, to North America. If you pulled out a map, you would see that that made a triangle. So what does that mean, y'all? That means that our ancestors who were kidnapped from the motherland and traversed through the entire Middle Passages, over a million of whom are at the floor of the ocean right now. Their remains are on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean right now. For those of us who survived, for those of us who are the descendants of those who survived, some of those ships stopped in Brazil. Some of those ships stopped in what's now America. Some of those seals, ships stopped in what's now Jamaica, just to pull out a few. They stopped in different geographic areas throughout that triangular pattern. But where did those ships start from? They started from the motherland, Africa, the continent, West Africa, to be specific. It started there and our ancestors were dispersed all throughout North America, South America, and the Caribbean. Hence the triangle slave trade. Meaning that we are here just by happenstance. 
It's just happenstance that your ancestors were dropped here instead of South America, instead of the Caribbean. It's just happenstance. The root is the same. You're exactly right, Cesar. Those ships stopped in most islands of the Caribbean from Africa. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are multiple races of people in Jamaica, Ralph, just like in America. Hello. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here who call yourselves African-Americans, meaning that you are descendant of the slave that of these enslaved Africans who were dropped off in this country, you are descendants of the slave trade that ultimately landed your ancestors here. Let me ask you this question. How many of you are still hundreds of years later, 100% African? I will wait. Put it in the chat. I don't see any. How many of you are 100% African? Not a damn one of you. Don't you even understand that the way that the system was perpetuated in this country, especially and in others as well. Rape was a constant reality as a form of oppression, as well as a form to multiply their slave holdings. This should not be news to you. Pick up a book. None of you are 100% African. So I am tired of these folk talking about the fact that, oh, she's not really black because her dad's Jamaican and her mom is Indian. So, okay. And her dad's not 100%. He was Jamaican, but he wasn't 100% like African Jamaican. Are you African American like in the true sense? Are you 100% African, bruh? I doubt it. Go and patronize my sister that has the business African Ancestry and, and really get your DNA analysis analyzed and then come back and report in. I want to see which one of you who think that you're 100% African prove it. Damn it. So this BS about she's not black, you are really showing your ignorance. That is the most asinine thing I have ever heard. Yes, there is a difference between African American and black in terms of how we contextualize our specific experience as those of us who are descendant of the slave experience in America. But somehow I don't remember this controversy about whether or not Barack Obama was black or African American. Guess what? He is not a descendant of the slave experience in America. His father was African. You are really showing yourself to be a complete dumbass. If you are running around here talking about Kamala Harris isn't black because her father's Jamaican. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Have you ever been to Jamaica? 
I know we probably can't now because dumbass has screwed things up so much that your passport is worthless, but I would suggest that as soon as you can, you take a damn trip. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I cannot. I cannot. These same people had nothing to say about Barack Obama. So why don't we say, oh, but he's not really African-American because he's also the descendant of an immigrant to this country who was actually 100% African. I cannot, y'all. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I'm just, so that's the number one thing I want to talk about tonight because I've had it. I was just on a show right before I came here where I'll, I had to give this little spiel in like maybe 30 seconds. So now I have more time. So I really wanted to be able to lay it out. So what I have, so I don't have to talk about this again. I'm really hoping that this is shared broadly so people can be educated because apparently they need to be. That bullshit stops now. Lord, now, I cannot. Now that we've got that one done. <laughs> that one's done. Okay. The next one I want to talk about. Okay. Oh my God. She wasn't a progressive prosecutor. Jesus, Scamble is a cop. Y'all. Y'all, y'all. Chalet, he's a freaking, they question, why do they question his American heritage? He was an immigrant. I, I really don't understand why you keep making excuses for these crazy people, okay? He was an immigrant, just like Barack Obama's father was an immigrant. And when you immigrate over here, you can become an American citizen. This is not complicated. You can become a citizen of this country if you're not born here. That would make you what? <gasps> An American. I'm done with the excuses, guys. Any others? Let me just take it now. Get it on out the way. Put on my glasses so I can read them. Yeah, I think they were wrong too. Absolutely. Oh, have mercy. Next. All right. So the thing about uh, Kamala the cop and all that stuff. <laughs> Leah said, you are giving me my entire life. <laughs> I'm tired, Leah. I'm tired of being diplomatic. I don't have any more diplomatic uh, energy left in me. I'm just tired. I'm tired. Uh, okay. I, you know what? So y'all saw, if y'all saw the, the NPR interview today. You saw this chick try to uh, say this stuff about, you know, Kamala and she's not a progressive prosecutor and uh, oh, we don't like her. Y'all might have noticed that when I did that interview, I referenced a recent USA Today opinion piece written by a, uh, a public defender that actually was someone who used to, in essence, battle Kamala in court, right? Public offender versus, versus prosecutor. And interestingly, this public defender wrote this piece right here. I happen to have referenced it um, today. And in case you guys haven't seen it yet, Feel free to look it up, okay? The name of the piece is Harris, period. She was the most progressive DA in California. This is dated August 10th, 2020. This was dated August 10th, 20. Thank you so much for putting that in the chat for me, Kimmit. 
this was this was dated on so you know what what what's the day the 12th this was just two days ago okay now here's one thing i want to say before i get into the details about this the first thing i want to say is 92 percent of prosecutors are white i think that's the right number let me make sure i got that number right hold on give me a second give me a second okay i believe it's nine it might even be more than that let me just double check guys i want to make sure i'm giving you the right number the first thing i want you to know i don't see it i'll find it i'll come back to it but I know it's over 90%. It's either 92 or 96. I'm trying to remember which one. They're white. Um, are we saying, I mean, do y'all really want to make the argument that you want 100% of prosecutors who are deciding the fate of black people who are before them in court. Are you really saying you want them all to be white? Thank you. Barbara Arwine's on here. Lawyer extraordinaire. She's saying only 5% are black of prosecutors. Only 5% are black. You know what? I think we need more. Because what really pisses me off about this argument is that as this really started, it was just Kamala the cop, Kamala the cop, Kamala the cop. She was never a cop, y'all. The woman has a law degree. She was a district attorney and attorney general of the largest state in the nation for two terms. Don't diminish her career by trying to make it a slur and lie. But that said, let me just also say that a lot of people were trying to sound like because she was a prosecutor, period, that that is disqualifying. Number one, as I mentioned, do you really want only white people in the position to determine what you're charged with and what you're not charged with? To determine whether or not to go for the death penalty or, you know, let a person go. Do you really want only white people making those decisions? Shelly, I got plenty of information, honey. I think you probably just need to stay here and take notes. So listen. That's ridiculous. I hope that we can agree that that's ridiculous. Can we all agree on that? That is ridiculous. So that's the first thing I just kind of want to acknowledge. Okay? Now, the second thing is, I don't know if any, of, any one of you have been a victim of crime or have had anybody in your family that's been a victim of crime. But I don't know about you. If that's the case, I would kind of want the person who perpetrated the crime to go to trial and be prosecuted. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. But I kind of think I'm not the only one who feels like that. If something happened to my babies, I would want the people who did it to be prosecuted. Thank you, Lewis. He, he said, thank you for talking up for, uh, talking up for victims. Absolutely. Don't the victims deserve that? So these people are, oh, she put people in jail. Trust and believe some of them probably should have been in jail. 
if not all. I'm just saying. And you'll see why I put that last phrase in there when I tell you what she did as prosecutor and what she did decades ago before this has started to become more commonplace. Lord, I just cannot, y'all. I just cannot with the ridiculousness. I want people to think logically. Oh. Exactly, Karen. Whew, Lord, have mercy. Okay, so let me start with this. I'm going to actually sit here and just read some of this to you. I want to read some of this to you who apparently some have been so um, inundated with propaganda that you are just believing what you're hearing as maybe posts on Facebook or on Twitter or certain people and you don't know the facts. So let me tell you the facts about her prosecutorial record. Okay? <laughs> All right, so here we go. This public defender says, as a public defender for 24 years, 24 years, I have examined, critiqued, and battled Harris when she was the San Francisco district attorney. So she has literally faced her in the courtroom, y'all. And then she said, more often than not, Harris and I were in opposite sides. We were on opposite sides. Having had this experience, I feel compelled. Meaning that she was probably tired of the bullshit too. Because she knew it was a lie. She said, I feel compelled to speak on Harris's record while she has a, while she was a district attorney. Simply put, wait a minute, you guys. Wait a minute. Listen to this next part. Simply put, Harris was the most progressive prosecutor in the state. You know, if you're not willing to listen to facts, Chalet, you might as well go somewhere because I can't convince you. This woman knows more about it than you do. She actually battled her in the courtroom. She says, this is not an anecdotal opinion. It is based on facts. And then she goes to give examples. Shall I proceed? Yes, I will. In San Francisco, the DA... Harris refused to seek the death penalty even on a case where a respected police officer was tragically killed. I want y'all to hear that. In a case where a cop was murdered and they apprehended the person that murdered the policeman, she still did not pursue the death penalty. Do you think that was normal behavior, guys? Do you think that's what most prosecutors would do, especially those that do not look like you? I'm curious. Does that seem normal? People popping off in the mouth. They don't even know what they're talking about. The accusations, okay? The, I just want y'all to know how rare that is. Now let's talk about marijuana sales. Marijuana sales cases were routinely reduced. Routinely reduced to misdemeanors. A marijuana possession cases were not even on the court's docket. Are y'all hearing me? Marijuana possession cases, just possession, were not even on the court's docket. 
Meaning that she didn't even bring charges in those cases. She said there, there was, um, unless there was a large grow case. So this is like a large case where a person is, looks like they're a huge, huge, huge dealer or unique circumstance. This was a reform minded approach of then DA Harris. The accusations about marijuana possessions being harsh during her ten tenure are absurd. Absurd. The reality was quite the opposite. Now let's talk about victims. Someone mentioned victims. I think this is probably to me one of the most compelling parts of her record. She co-founded Kamala Harris co-founded the coalition to end the exploitation of kids. She co-founded the coalition to end the exploitation of kids. And then she spearheaded a task force combating human trafficking of girls. So, you know, I don't know if anybody here is pro-human trafficking. I mean, if you are, then you really need to leave this stream because I can't even speak to you, okay? But if you are anti-human trafficking, it seems like you would want law enforcement in those cases to stop the human traffickers. She said upon her invitation, Kamala invited her to a task force meeting, that task force that she created so that she could talk about one of her juvenile clients, the public defender. My client, a beautiful teenage girl, had aspirations of joining the military. I'm going to talk about the San Francisco Chronicle Weekly in a minute, Chalet. So you keep dropping those links, but I can tell y'all why they're full of shit. Just let me finish here first, y'all. She was selling her body. Her, she's talking about the client now that this uh, public defender had. Her client had been selling her body to earn money when she was murdered, essentially. And she was found dead in a San Francisco dumpster. Harris and her the public defender talked about the exploitation of young girls happening on a constant basis. And unlike her predecessors, previous DAs, she did something about it. Hey, Cheryl Lee Ralph's in the house. How you doing, girl? You're welcome. She, what did she do, y'all? You may ask, what did she do? Guess what? She stopped prosecuting young girls for prostitution. And instead, she focused on giving them the trauma and the treatment that they needed to escape that situation. Wouldn't, isn't that what you would want her to do? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Is there something else you would want her to do? I am so tired of the bullshit, y'all. I'm, I'm telling you. So what else? That won't all, y'all. Deshaun says, Dr. Deshaun, hey, Dr. Deshaun's one of my clients. She said, I have social worker friends in agreement with that policy. Absolutely. Because it's those poor girls need help. They don't need to be arrested. They need help. They're being exploited. So now what happened? Harris also formalized a court for young adults charged with felonies that resulted in them avoiding conviction and getting a second chance. Let me just say that again in case you didn't get it. She formalized a court, a special area of proceedings, right? Where young people could go who were otherwise, they were charged with felonies. And y'all know what a screw up a felony is on your record. Everybody here understands that, right? So what she did was she had this court that allowed them to avoid conviction. She allowed them to avoid conviction 
and let them have a second chance. She brought in a community organizer to head that initiative. And it's called the Back on Track program. And that tro program still exists today. It was the first diversionary program of its kind in the nation. I know some of y'all are never satisfied, but what have you done that's been halfway as, as, as helpful as this to changing people's lives? Instead of being caught up with a felony on your record forever. Having the foresight to be the first person in the nation to create this diversionary program that was specifically mean, that was specifically meant to help them avoid prosecution and instead of that, give them the training and the tools and the services that they need in order to get back on track with their lives. I'm just like, I'm just, people always got something to say. What have you done? Okay. Another example. She was just saying that as it, relate, as it relates to Kamala's work around the death penalty, for example, she said that just last month in California, the... Santa Clara County DA said that he would no longer seek the death penalty. Guess what? That comes 16 years, 16 years after Harris did it in San Francisco. Thank you for finally catching up, Mr. Jeff Rosen out of Santa Clara County, California. Y'all, I just can't. So the person who wrote this piece is the chair of the San Francisco Public Defender's Office Racial Justice Committee. And she says there, I, here that I have just scratched and clawed, for, that she has scratched and clawed for some semblance of justice in the courts for well over two decades. And she said that she grappled with the idea of defending a prosecutor. But Harris is more than that. I had to acknowledge the truth and say what I feel is right to set the record straight. Okay, y'all, I'm just getting started. You know, I, I'm just, I am tired of people. I, I want you guys to understand something. You're exactly right, Monica. Right now it's called restorative justice. Exactly. That phrase didn't exist then, but this is what it, that, that's practically what it does now. Exactly. Here, here is why I, I, I'm really, I'm taking the time to do some of this tonight, you guys. Because I want you to understand how misinformation is spread and the fact that our community specifically has been targeted with misinformation since 2016. I've done a live on this before. In terms of the last presidential election, you had the Russians in collusion with the Trump campaign, even though they were able to wiggle their way out of it, and Cambridge Analytica. And they spent millions on manipulating black people especially. In fact, they spent more money. Their budget was larger for spreading misinformation to black people than to any other demographic group in this nation. Now listen, we didn't know what was happening in 2016. So we didn't know it until after. But let me tell you, you know it now. You know it now. Fool me 
once, shame on you. Fool me twice. All the stuff you're reading, all these little memes you're seeing, all these little doctored videos that are going all around Twitter and Facebook that are making it look like people are saying that they did not say. You better recognize what's happening. You're being manipulated. And some of these people who are blacker than black are getting paid to manipulate you. Specifically as a strategy to minimize and to suppress the black vote. Why do you think Kanye's out here running for president? That fool ain't going to be president. It is yet another strategy to undermine the power of the black vote. They do it in multiple ways, y'all. It's the long lines. It's the voter ID laws. It's the purging of voter rolls. It's the ridiculous Kanye candidacies. And it's the people on Twitter and on Facebook that have black profile pics that are over there in Russia. Making you think they black. Spreading all sorts of lies. And like I said on the NPR interview today, there's actually been studies that have found that no candidate was targeted more by these types of bots on social media with lies and distortions than Kamala Harris. So all you can drop all the links that you want. And I'm going to tell you right now, 90% of it is lies. There is some collusion going on right now, but it's not just with the Trump campaign. Let me just keep it real clear. There are people on both sides of the spectrum that are working together to spread misinformation. That is the truth. And you saw how I had to nip some of that in the bud today was supposedly a reputable source, NPR. She was still there lying, won't she? So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to question things. I'm going to ask you to question sources. There are certain publications I know as soon as it comes out, it's BS. There are certain publications I know are not to be trusted. So I'm just, I'm just asking you to use your common sense, please. Please. Lord, I've kept you on here an hour. I wonder if I should go more. But I think this one is important for you to hear. In Harris's first year as DA, guess what, y'all? She was recognized by the San Francisco Child Abuse Prevention Campbell Ca Council as Child Advocate of the Year. And you know what she did? She launched the first on-site trauma therapy program for children and youth who are victims and witnesses of domestic violence or sexual assault in California. She placed a special emphasis on recruiting, they say minority in this article, I will say counselors of color, who would be best equipped to provide culturally appropriate services to youth clients who are primarily African-American, or let me say black, because I don't want to piss somebody off and Latinx. She opened San Francisco's first safe house for prostituted youth. That relates back to what we were just talking about. 
In San Francisco, over 100 minors were being arrested for prostitution e each year, but through her nonprofit organization, Coalition to End the Exploitation of Kids, prior to becoming DA, Harris was integral in efforts to end the San Francisco DA's practice of charging minors for prostitution. Listen, y'all. In the area of restorative justice, she opened three neighborhood courts. You know, this sounds very close to what people are asking for when they're running around here today talking about abolish the police. She opened three neighborhood courts, raising the total to 12. What happens in those neighborhood courts, you might ask? Well, what happens is the community courts handled adults charged with misdemeanor crimes such as petty gambling, graffiti, loitering, shoplifting, assault and battery, alcohol, beverage control uh, violations, lesser drug violations, and other miscellaneous, miscellaneous quality of life crimes. The cases referred to by the prosecutors were adjudicated through a panel of local Residents, over 100 volunteers citywide. I just cannot. I'm telling you. Oh, hey, Delana. I'm I missed I missed part of that, but I, maybe that probably had to do with um, uh, Kanye but I'll go back to why Kanye is a threat in a minute. Um, I just, I mean, I could go on and on. I want y'all to just go to Medium. This is a different source I'm gonna give you because this is like a 12, 15 probably page document. Go to Medium, Google Black Women's Views. She's done a great job of chronicling and I can do a part two of this if you need me to, because it's so much, I would probably be on here for another couple of hours in all seriousness. But I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Like I said, I'm okay if you have your choices. Every, it's a democracy. Everybody's cool it's absolutely cool to have your choice but i'm not okay with lying on a sister that i'm not okay with i'm not okay with that and i'm especially annoyed when black people are doing it i kind of expect that to happen obviously you expect that to happen in politics that's part of campaigning unfortunately there are a lot of false charges that are used as a tack lines against the person that you're against. But to see people, and especially black people, either fall for the okie doke or purposely spread lies, for what reason, I don't know, maybe because they'd rather a white man be in this position. I've never seen so many black people I mean, I mean, I don't even understand it. Between the between the Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren people, all I'm saying is, it's okay to disagree politically, but don't lie. Don't lie, and don't try to hold somebody else hostage because you lost. twice I'm just saying and on that note <laughs> uh, Davis what I will do is as soon as I get off of here I will drop the link to the NPR interview uh, in the comments so you guys can see uh, what I was referring to, but it, 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 it's just the insidiousness. The insidiousness. And I want you to know that it's because she had an agenda and 
she all hurt because she couldn't back up the agenda with the votes that were necessary to be the for her candidate to be the nominee. And so it's too bad. You need to listen to your candidate. Now. Because your candidates moved on, your candidates on board. They've even started their own pack, which I thought packs were like the worst thing since sliced bread. But I guess it's okay if it's a pack for what, you know, for what you want. So with that said, guys, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's programming. <laughs> Jada says do another one of these. I will have to do another one of these. Um absolutely i i will definitely have to do another one of these this this has been um i've just been really annoyed with how this has been going down and i'm i'm done with it i'm done with it i'm done with it you, you know people we have a, the most i mean i know people say this all the time but this is not bs this is the most consequential election in our lifetimes coming up in november for real for real i'm not joking at all we're now losing somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 people a day dead because of coronavirus. We're now at over 160,000 people dead. It has been projected that by the time of the election, we will be well over 200,000 people dead. People around here. Still saying foolish things. It, I mean, I don't even understand. Your life is freaking on the ballot, y'all. Your parents' lives, your grandparents' lives, your children's lives. This is literally a life or death situation. Not even to mention the economic fallout from the incompetence in terms of how this pandemic has been and continues to be mishandled. And y'all want to fuck around. Some of you, not all of you. I don't want to sit here and, la you know, lash out at everybody. But those folks who do, they know who they are. I don't want any Eddie Gloud-like activities this darn election, okay? That ain't cute. How'd that work out for you? I kind of remember somebody saying in the last campaign, Woo, what do you have to lose? I remember somebody saying that. I guess now it's pretty clear. Your job, your house, your life, just to name a few. So I am hoping that we got all this ridiculousness out of the system in 2016 and we now know not to listen to people who do not have your interest at heart because a lot of these people i don't be serious a lot of these big stars on the far left are multi 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 millionaires they will be just fine with another trump presidency in fact they'll be a little better off because they get to keep their tax cuts. Y'all know Crystal Ball's next work network. You better look it up. You know the dude who I can't Turk. What is his name? The guy who has Young Turks. Look up his network, y'all. Y'all know I ain't talking about Bernie because Bernie's acting right right now. So I'm not gonna be mean to Bernie, but you know, he a multimillionaire too. All these folks that want you to have a revolution, they going home to mansions. Let's just keep that real. Be careful. 
who you listen to. And think about what's in their self-interest. And see if you can tie any link between their self-interest and what they're telling you. It's us dying. More than anybody else. They're willing to risk your life so they can play revolutionary. Susan Sarandon. They're going to risk your life for that. Even Eddie. With his nice job at Princeton. Expensive cigars and whiskey that he takes pictures of on Twitter. He'll be just fine. Will you? How about your family? How about your mama? How about your daddy? I want you to really, really think about your source of information and what they have to gain by having you act or not act in a certain way that will ultimately help them to continue to promote their own interests. I want y'all to think about that. Think about that. Follow the money. These people that don't want billionaires to exist, they sure don't want millionaires to stop existing because that would mean they would stop existing. Hello. Follow the money. Do they really have your interest at heart? Think about it. Whew. Thank you, Carolyn. 83 days until election day. It's time to be bout it, bout it. It's time to be bout it, bout it. No more time for foolishness. No more time for distractions. No more, no, no more time to be carried down rabbit holes with ridiculous types of, you know, false feigning uh, you know, clutching pearls around stories that are hyperbolic, complete lies, or great distortions of the truth to get you to do what they want you to do. This is about manipulation. Because let me tell you, the power of the black vote is real. I saw someone, I'll say this and then I'll get off, but I saw someone write a post the other day about, oh, black people only 13% of the population. Why are they telling you that they can, they can um, control, they're lying to you if they're telling you they can control an election. This ain't a democracy, y'all. It's a republic. We have an electoral college system. Black people represent the key voting block in several of the states that will decide who wins in the electoral college. I'm looking at you, Pennsylvania. I'm looking at you, Illinois. I'm looking at you, Michigan. I'm looking at you, Wisconsin. I'm looking at you, North Carolina. Key, key votes in all of those states. We are the margin of victory we have the ability to shift this election on our own. We don't need the batshit crazy people. Let them be batshit crazy on their own. If we come out at the level that we have the capability of coming out, we can win without them. I don't have time for batshit crazy. I just don't. We need to do what we need to do to win this damn election because I will not have these people threaten my life and the life of those people that I love while they sit up in their mansions chilling. Hmm. 
I just, I cannot. You're right, Jada. She said, she said Florida could swing too if they stop suppression. I know, but man, y'all got, y'all got that damn governor down there, man. He going to do what I don't, he going to do whatever. I, you know, the thing is Florida and governor, Florida and Georgia have these two, you know, they have those Republican governors who will do everything possible to rig the election on top on behalf of Donald Trump. So that's why I didn't even include those in the analyses. Okay. But we got a shot in Pennsylvania, in Illinois, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in North Carolina. Those five states. If we do what we're supposed to do, we can win this thing. I want you to know that when Obama won, he won because of us. Don't you let anybody tell you anything different. And I tell you that because the Democratic Party has not received the majority of the white vote in America since the 1960s. That means as much as people tried to tell you that Obama won because racism disappeared, the majority of white people actually voted against Obama. Twice. Including white women. We did that shit. Now what, what I want you to do is own your power. Why do you think why do you think we were targeted like we were in 2016? Because they saw what we did in 2008 and 2012. That's the answer. It ain't difficult to figure out. They know your power. What I want is for you to know it. So on that happy note, <laughs> on that happy note, I know we still don't, I, absolutely Rosalind, we don't really, come on now. So what I want us to know is that, yeah, Absolutely patience, but you guys have a chance in North Carolina because at least now in North Carolina, you have a Repub you have a Democratic governor that can hopefully reduce the level of shenanigans, okay, so that you can have something closer to a fair election in North Carolina. That's why I'm saying we can win North Carolina. We can win North Carolina. We can win Pennsylvania. We can win Wisconsin. We can win Illinois. We can win all of those states. And when we do that, this Bama is out the White House. It's that simple. We are the margin of victory. Until we go messing around with our voting block. By voting for a ridiculous Kanye West. Either if he's on the ballot or as a write-in. By f moving forward with the Eddie Gloud bonehead strategy of skipping over the presidential option. When you do stupid stuff like that, you are sentencing us to four more years of this white supremacist ignoramus that we have right now in the White House. And so I'm going to need for people to stop with the whining and the ridiculousness and the very unfair focus shall I say, racist and sexist and misogynoiristic critiques of Kamala Harris and instead focus on the real problem, which is the fool in the White House that's trying to kill you. Exactly right, Tamika, the postal service is slow. Don't get discouraged. Get in line. Absolutely. I agree. I'm going to, I'm just going to vote in person. I'm just going to risk it all y'all. Cause I'm telling you, they are 
purposely sabotaging the post office to fool with your vote. All these people that are talking about Kamala Harris, I haven't sit, heard any of them say one damn thing about that. In fact, I never hear them say anything bad about Trump. You should ask yourself, why is that? You should really ask yourself, why is that? I have, you know, I'm right at like 5,000 Facebook friends. I'm telling you, I have released myself of quite a few people who have shown that tendency because I don't have time for that foolishness. You have shown me who you are. And I'd rather make space for people that have some damn sense. Absolutely. So I guess with that said, yep, <laughs> exactly. With that said, you guys, hey guys, I'm sorry I haven't had time to read as many comments tonight because I was so busy with just giving you information. But I'm hoping that this was helpful. Like I said, this just scratches the surface. The true expert on these issues is Black Women Views. She has her own page on Facebook. She has her own YouTube channel. You can see her, follow her, check out some of her pieces that she's had published on Medium. There's volumes of information if you would actually take the time to read it. Rather than just accept as truth doctored videos. Okay. Can we at least agree on that? Because I'm tired. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. Good, Sherelle. She said it's very helpful. Thank you, Erica, for putting for tagging Black Women's Views on here. Uh-huh. You are welcome, Patience. I'm telling you. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, there's my homie. Tracy's in the house. Hey, Tracy. All right, you guys. Well, I am going to go. I've been on here for almost 90 minutes. You guys have held on. <laughs> I didn't mean to be on here this long. But honestly, I could have gone on and on and on. And I didn't want to be on here that long. It would have definitely, definitely taken me hours and hours and hours and hours to go through everything. But I hope I've at least provided you with enough information so that now you will begin to question things instead of just accepting them to be truth whenever you hear them. And oftentimes, some of the biggest lies are the ones that are said the loudest and are repeated the most often. But when you are armored with truth, then you can check folks in real time. All right? Because that's what we need to do. We don't have time for the foolishness. I have zero patience anymore. I'm not being nice. I'm sorry. Not being... No, I ain't got time for that. We got 80 some days. Our lives are on the line. I don't have time for ridiculousness. So let's go out here and do this. All right? Okay, guys. Great seeing you. I will thank you, Brian. Uh, you're right, Nadine. We cannot afford to lose. I hope you all thank you guys. Thanks for jumping on. Hey, D. Great seeing you all. And congratulations to Kamala Harris. We're going to bring it home. Take care, guys. Bye.